Okay, our uh, today's first speaker is Professor Plovnikov. Oh, please start. Okay, therefore I'm, I start. First of all, I would like to thank the organizer for kind invitation, invitation to deliver the talk at this um, workshop. And then let me start. Uh, the topic of the talk is the uh, derivation of the equation for nonlinear waves uh, uh, with elastic nonlinear waves on the surface of ocean covered by uh, viscoelastic shells. Therefore, the goal is the derivation and the analysis of the governing equation. Okay, let me first recall the class, the standard formulation of the gravity in nonlinear wave problem, non-stationary. It, it, sometimes it is um, called as nonlinear Cauchy Poisson problem. This is the standard metron, which is assumed that the flow domain is, uh, is some kind of layer or strip in the plane of the two dimension in this two dimensional plane. And it is defined at every moment t, it is defined by the equalities, the inequalities which is written this. Therefore, from bottom, it is bounded from by the solid wall, uh, the finite depth minus R, and, uh, and from them, uh, <clears throat> and then it is bounded uh, by the some free surface sigma t, uh, which is in fact the graph of the elevation function H. Okay, this is written. We consider, uh, we restrict our consideration by the periodic base and as the periodic case and assume that the function H which determines the free boundary satisfies the following period conditions, periodicity conditions with some period T, uh, which is maybe fixed, maybe unknown. It depends on the formulation of the problem. It's, it's a standard matter that uh, assumption that uh, velocity field, uh, velocity of the fluid is irrotational and incompressible, and then the velocity V is, is defined by velocity potential phi, uh, and phi is a harmonic function in the flow domain. The Cauchy-Lagrange integral gives the expression for pressure. It is written in the form of four here. Um, and of course, I have only note that the pressure is defined with accuracy up to the inhibitory function uh, f of the, of the temporal variable. But without loss of generality, we may assume that this function is just zero. Okay, also we yeah, will assume that potential satisfies the same periodicity condition and how in the horizontal direction. And then this is complete formulation of the gravity wave in, on the surface of, the, of an ideal fluid. You can see this Laplacian equation, two boundary conditions. The first boundary condition uh, on the free surface is uh, dynamic condition, and the second condition, it is kinematic condition. This means that the material particle cannot leave the free surface and stay at the free surface for all time. The third, and the third boundary condition is just impermeability condition, and also we have add to initial data. The velocity field at the initial moment and the elevation of the base at the initial moment should be prescribed. Okay. 
a flexible wave uh, or hydro elastic wave, which is a little bit more complicated to map. Uh, I give uh, it is not complete list of the literature, and I mention only a paper which are related to the topic of our to the topic of this talk. And, the, and also I mentioned the paper Chen Gilbert Vienna, which is devoted, papers which are devoted to the viscous elastic problem case. Okay, now let me introduce some details and uh, to present some notation which will be used throughout of the talk, which is standard matter. First, of course, we assume that three surface is elastic rod, which is one dimensional, of course, to the elastic rod. And next, we, at the, at the beginning of the gravity base, we, we assume that uh, free surface is a graph of some function R, which is to be very strong restriction. Here, we can see the more general setting and assume that uh, the free surface is a par parameterized, parameterized curve on the language of geometry, which is immersion. And then uh, it depends on the, uh, the function R of the sum parameter T in temporal variable. Theta is a, in elasticity, theta is a reference Lagrangian variable. It is just a label of the material particle of the rod. We assume that it is also a periodic and uh, take the simplest periodic, periodicity condition like this. In this setting, uh, the physical period T, which is represented by the following formula, it becomes unknown because now the period of elastic rod in reference variables are in reference variable are fixed. But physical period in this framework becomes unknown. However, it just does not depend on T, it follows from this simple formula. And uh, in fact, it is completely determined by the initial data. Okay. Now some geometric standard notation. First fundamental form of curve, which is very simple things, it has only one scalar coefficient j, ball j, and it is given by this formula. Uh, the S is arc length variable. The derivative with respect to the S is given by the second formula. In our framework, dS is nonlinear differential operator because the coefficient square root of j is dependent on r in some nonlinear manner. Next, the unit tangent vector is defined by standard way. It is derivative with respect to s of the parameter, the function r, it defines the parameterization of the curve. Normal vector, of course, it is orthogonal to, to tangent vector. And finally, the curvature. In geometry, curvature is a vector. The curvature, the curvature is defined by this relation. And capital K is a scalar cur curvature. It is given by. If we, sometimes it is reasonable to represent uh, the tangent vector and the form back, it is some kind of the slope of the three surface. In this setting, it is clear that K is just our plans derivative of the capital T. Periods. Okay, now we consider periodically, we consider periodic solutions. Therefore, it is, can, it is reasonable to introduce a new notation for the surface to the arc gamma t, which is just period, self period of the free surface and the corresponding self period of the flow domain like this. Now the length of gamma t, it is the length of period, period, period is given by the formula. It depends on T. In fact, it is unknown. It should be defined along the solution of the problem. 
זה אלסטיק אנרגי, I take it as the simplest form, I just stand the simplest form, like modified oiler elastic, זה רפוא, זה אלסטיק אנרגי, of the road, the period is given by this formula. It is a, some, gamma is some positive constant. Uh, and, uh, the important remark is that this quantity depends only the shape of gamma t. It is independent on the choice of parameter. Therefore, if we deal with Euler and, and this Euler type elastic energy, then we can define the stretch, only bending, only curvature. Uh, can that, uh, this quantity is independent of the choice of parameterization, which is an important remark, and this leads to many difficulties in mathematics. Okay, now I would like to calculate some shape derivative or shape gradient of the elastic energy. First, I give you first, I recall the general notation. If you have some geometric function, pure geometric function of J dependent of gamma of R periodic curve, then assume that each derivative, which is the derivative, admits the, this so-called Hadamar representation for any vector field X, capital X. Then the gradient of this function of J is given by the following formula, pi by M, which is directed along the normal. In the derivative geometric function, gradient of geometric functionals are directed along the normal field. For elastic energy, this formula is well known. It is like, it is a classic formula. And uh, here there is some gradient with respect to S. It is so-called geometry, it's called connection. Uh, this formula are valid for roads in multidimensional space, not on the plane, for it is quite general formula. And this is defined like, in fact, it is normal projection of the of the derivative of, for example, say, uh, vector field phi, uh, where pi is, the, the capital pi is the projection, projection defined by this inequality. In two case, it is very simple, but in the 3D case, it is uh, in multidimensional case, it is, uh, you can use the first representation. Okay. This connection has very remarkable properties that for gradient term, if, if I have normal vector field with some scalar A, it just gives me, then we have this formula, therefore N is not differentiated. It is a property of geometric, so-called geometric connection of the This is, then we can rewrite it like the form, it is directed along the normal, and sometimes it is useful. Okay, now we consider sigma t like a serat kirgov hyperelastic rod. This means in the theory of Kasserat rod, the rod of Kasserat elastic material, the state of material is completely characterized by position. In our case, it is a curve gamma t or sigma t, and so called director. In two dimensional case, it is the following Kirchhoff hypothesis, the hypothesis we can take, we must take the direction director D, D is named director in the Kasserat theory, is just a normal vector. Material is hyperelastic and then the derivative. Now all integral in elasticity are taken with respect to uh, reference variable theta. Uh, it should be taken in the form. It follows from the, for example, Altman theory, Altman theory, and other in general, Kassara theory. However, it should define some physical invariance condition in physically reasonable or, or the density of free energy, which, has a, which depends on the curvature and the first fundamental form coefficient. <coughs> 
for the oil elastic we have the we can the rewrite the representation for the oil elastic uh, like the energy density like free stored energy elastic energy density in this form which is exactly correspond correspond to the oil elastic uh, sum which was which were then, which was denoted by e Calculation, the relation is very simple. This is identity. In particular, we know that we have this quantity. Therefore, it is also, this is just another representation for the Euler elastic. Now we can rewrite the governing equation for the flexible wave, for the flexible water wave. Uh, now, of course, you have the Laplacian equation in the flow domain, but uh, I'm sorry here in the multiple gamma I was missing. And but the dynamic condition becomes more complicated. It is convenient to write it because the first, this part is a vector. It is directed along the normal therefore it is convenient to write it in the vector form. Which is dynamic condition, the sum add some terms, elastic terms were added. And the kinematic condition can be written in the more invariant form, geometric form, which reads like this. And the other boundary and initial condition are the same as for gravity waves. We have the energy conservation law. Uh, for areas uh, sufficiently smooth solution of our problem, uh, then the, the total energy of the system consists of the elastic energy, E, K, kinetic energy, and the energy, I'm sorry, here should be X, and the energy of the gravity energy of the wave. Okay. Uh, for for the consideration, the following remark is important. What is the strain in the elasticity? The strains in the elasticity are the derivative, special derivative of the deformation field. And more precisely, the symmetric derivatives. In the Cassera theory of nonlinear wave, nonlinear rods, elastic Cassera rod. We have derivative of the R is some kind of deformation. We have first, you have two, two uh, quantities which define the rod. The shape of the rod is defined by R and by the director. Therefore, they each is easily seen that they have this representation where zeta and eta are given by this. Then in, this, in following the Antman in the Cassera theorem, we can consider the strains like quantities uh, zeta and eta, which is very important point and makes the problem more complicated. Viscoelastic rod, which is the basic the reference for the theory of Gidre, uh, for theory of Cosserat rods, the uh, biscoelastic Cosserat rods. Uh, uh, the only remark here is that there is two, that there is two, two different approaches to the theory. I will, I use only the first one. This approach is based, based on the. Uh, on the hypothesis that there is some dissipation energy potential and the dissipation dissipative terms in the kinematic, in the dynamic conditions should be defined as the variation of this dissipation function. And the other one is based on the Kelvin Foyt, uh, on the Kelvin Foyt uh, Maxwell approach. And, and I, I refer to the mentioned paper by mentioned paper 
factors. Yes, Chen, Gilbert, and Vienna. Uh, for the count the theory in this theory related to the theory of the, in the case of the second Maxwell Kelvin Foyt approach. Okay, let us continue. Following the, this, uh, Altman and uh, other authors, uh, the basic is the Altman book on the nonlinear elasticity, it is a Bible. Uh, following this book, we can derive, we can write the, uh, the dynamic condition on free boundary in the form where it is an uh, elastic term, it is the guided dynamic terms, given the dynamic pressure, and here will be two, uh, two dissipative terms. Why two strains? Uh, I have to note that the uh, storage energy depends not only of gradient of R, but also of gradient of D. Therefore, it is uh, so-called second order or gradient theory of elasticity. In fact, it includes the force or the derivative. Here yeah? is the force or the derivative of R. Therefore, there are two strains and two this and two stresses. Uh, one strain is zeta and eta, and thus we have two dissipation terms. It is because uh, we have the, the second order theory, gradient theory of elasticity. Okay, the, the only requirements uh, for these dissipative, dissipative terms is that the in total, the solution should satisfy the dissipative energy inequality, where the capital I is a positive of quadratic form of zeta dot and eta dot of the time derivative of zeta and eta. And uh, in fact, it is the only condition. Of course, it's, I can depend on K, J, and curvature lens element. Example, there is no, in the series, there is no prescribed uh, some rule how to derive the equation for these dissipative terms. They have many degree of freedoms. But unfortunately, because of, we have to find each subsets, equality must be satisfied, and therefore it is not completely a trivial task. I give the, I propose the, the following examples of the, these dissipative terms. It is a little bit complicated, but any terms dissipative, there is a, you can choose the various presentation for them, will be very complicated. It is a complicated mathematical theory. The key observation is. The key observation is this two identity. As the proof is technical, but it is uh, it is a mathematical fact. Uh, technical but mathematical. Then the boundary condition will be written in the form. Just of course, I have to like to look at this stuff. Here we have normal vector D and tangent vector D. Normal vector D and tangent vector D. Therefore, both are vector. And now the kinematic condition of the boundary problems becomes also a vector. Therefore, we have two scalar conditions. One of the normal condition, dynamic condition, dynamic condition, it is. Uh, first dissipative, second dissipative terms plus K plus elastic energy plus beta dynamics. And second is uh, tangent dissipative terms. Therefore, we have the Victoria form of the dynamic condition. Kinematic condition are the same as the equation are conditions uh, in boundary condition are the same as, as in the theory of gravity waves. Okay, now how the energy dissipation and equality, equality reads? Here's the dissipation function for this simple example. 
that is not simple, but this is example will look like this. It is clear that it is this. It is quadratic form of F dot and F dot. And the other quantity is like elastic energy, kinetic energy, and uh, sorry, this X uh, are the same. The question is, is the problem look like it's very non trivial uh, and therefore, there is um, the question is about do this problem well pose it or you pose it to, to check this, it is necessary to develop exist solutions. The final goal is to prove the existence of the uh, global solutions and each consists the four stages local existence, global existence, and pre systematic. The mathematical difficulty becomes clear. Let me consider the following simple equation. It is gradient flow for the oil elastic. It is a very classic mathematical object for study, and there is a lot of literature. In fact, we know everything. However, um, uh, about this problem, however, recently Rapid Spanner noted the, the proof of the local existence are only sketched and something is unclear in this place. Everything is correct, but there is no complete proof. And um, here I try to explain what is happening. In order to, to find is a nonlinear problem locally well posed or just it is well posed, therefore simply has no solution. It is necessary to, to investigate, to, to study, or to analyze the linearized problem, which is um, defined by this linearized operator. Uh, if the, this inverse operator exists, then the problem is correct. Let us consider this linearized problem for our case, for simplest case of the gradient flow for oil elastic. And uh, now we can to split the perturbation of the R in the tangent and this and normal parts. And what we can see is a small miracle. We have parabolic equation in the normal direction and just ODE in the tangent direction. Therefore, this problem, the total problem, is not a parabolic. It is a problem of mixed time. And this makes the theory very difficult. Therefore, the question is, because here we have more complicated boundary conditions, definitely more complicated boundary conditions, the key question is, do this problem, uh, linearized problem, is well posed or not? Unfortunately, the proof of this fact that it is split on the ODE and the parabolic equation is very technical and complicated and based on the very um, some chain of identities. Uh, for this case, I am I'm sure that everything is correct, but it is an unusual problem, and at present time I cannot say is it locally opposed or not. If it is locally opposed, it has very good a priori estimates, and then it is a method that leads to the global existence theorem and then so a simplistic behavior. But here the question becomes complicated. Then there is a lot of things to do, and I think that my time is finished, and then I have to say finished at this point. Thank you for attention. Okay. Is there any questions for our speaker? Um. Uh, my name is Karopkin. Um, uh, could you explain, please, but uh, please, just by fingers, what's the difference and uh, what's the meaning of uh, zeta and tau? I, I was lost when you introduced them. Okay, let us consider, for example, uh, 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 linear elasticity, standard linear elasticity, but the gradient of second order 
CRF. When the stored energy depends on the uh, first derivative of deformations and of the second derivative of deformations. Yes. You can see, for example, u, ux square plus ux x square, which is the, the gradient theory. Now we exactly have the uh, director depends on the gradient of the director depends on the curvature. It exactly has the theory, the second order theory. The have, if you have two terms, terms of the second order and terms of the fourth order, we have two strains. One of strains will be simply ux, and the second strain will be uxx. You have two stress tensors. And therefore, it is the same, but it is curvilinear, curvilinear situation. Uh, you have uh, some two, here basis not is the basis in Euclidean plane, but is the basis at time, uh, it is the phrase, it is the basis in the moving frame associated with the curve. Therefore, we have two stresses, it is, like for elasticity, linear elasticity equation for force order. Two stresses, two strains, two strains and two stresses. It is a standard matter, but the second order gradient theory in linear elasticity are not widely distributed. It's still some exotic beast in the world, but it is a fact. Okay. Um, thank you very much for your talk. I found it very interesting. Um, I would just like to ask, I noticed the title of your talk talks about viscoelastic sea ice. And my question is, why do you think the Cosseret rod as a generalization of a Kirchhoff sheet is applicable to sea ice? Um, uh, even uh, good question. No. For small magnitude, uh, amplitude of wave, uh, or for example, uh, shallow water equation, of course, we don't need Cassarat theory. Uh, the Cassarat theory, it is named Cassarat theory, but in fact, I use the Kirchhoff hypothesis. Therefore, it is, um, it is not general Cassarat theory. In some cases, it's a general fact. For large magnitude wave, when the deformation of the sheet are sufficiently large, are not small, this quantity, elastic energy, it was proved, it is theorem, it is the limit of, if you consider non-linear elasticity, and then take uh, the asymptotic analysis to the shell theory, then we, in any case, we obtain the theory which I described. Therefore, maybe Cassirat rot is not good name because it is a very particular case in Cassirat rot, and this is exactly the same it is, as it proposed in the book of Landau Lifshitz. Therefore, it is general theory for nonlinear sheet. If you assume that the sheet nonlinear, then uh, it is, uh, I think it is a only explicit theory for this stuff. Okay, I agree. The Cassirat rod, Cassirat theory of elasticity is quite general theory, but it is very particular case. It was not a good name. Thank you. Uh, let's welcome our next speaker. <laughs> 